Hello and welcome students for math for business and finance and math applications and we're working on the chapter 13 uh, summary practice test. Now uh, just like in the drill problems and the word problems um, I included the ordinary annuity table and the present value of an annuity table and the sinking fund table but I have a tendency more to rely upon the business math handbook. Um, I'm going to use these tables uh, where necessary, but when I'm not able to use them, um, like for example, uh, the number of periods is off, or um, the you know I end up with a half percentage, uh, I'm going to be uh, just referencing the factor in the business math handbook. So before I give the factor, you know, kind of pause the video and look up the factor to make sure that you know that you're doing it right, so that when you um, hear or see me give the factor, you can say, okay, yeah, um, I had gotten it right. If you listen to me do the, give you, or watch me give you the factor first, then when you're looking in the tables, you'll have a tendency to be hunting mentally for that particular number and not really learning how to use the tables the correct way. So, um, you know, pause the video, look up the factor for yourself, and then uh, continue on with the video and do the calcs to see if you're right. Okay, so... Uh, summary practice test one. All right, now let me get my pen. Come on, pen. There we go. All right, Linlow plans to deposit 1800 at the end of every six months for the next 15 years at 8% interest <laughs> compounded semi annually. So the payment is 1800 and it's every six months for the next 15 years so that's 30 periods right over 15 years and it's saying that it's 8% interest it compounded semi-annually so 8% uh, divided by 2 is 4% interest so we're going to be using 30 periods at 4% interest what is the value of Lynn's annuity at the end of 15 years? So let's jump up to the ordinary annuity table and we're looking at 4% for 30 years and we have a factor of 50.0849 so 50.04 Eight nine, no zero eight four nine. Sorry, and we're multiplying that by eighteen hundred dollars, which gives us an amount of um, one hundred thousand nine fifty two eighty two. Okay, so that's the amount of the annuity at the end of fifteen years. All right, simple. Number two on Abby Ellen's graduation from law school. Abby's uncle Bill Bull Brady promised her a gift of twenty-four thousand, or twenty-four hundred every quarter for the next four years after graduating from law school. The money could be invested at six percent compounded quarterly. Which offer should Abby choose? Okay, so before I go there, uh, let's see here. Yeah, um, go back and watch the word problem thirteen. 23. Um, this is exactly the same as that particular word problem. Okay, and in the, in that you know we were able to do it in one of uh, two different ways. Okay, so let's see here. Um, we have 2,400 as the payment every quarter for the next four years so every quarter that's you know compounding quarterly so four years is the time frame times four means 16 periods and if it's compounded at six percent quarterly okay so it's six percent divided by four and that gives us one and a half percent okay so we can take the $2,400 and treat it like an ordinary annuity and say okay I have 
I don't have one and a half percent on this table, which means you have to use the one that's in the uh, business math handbook. Okay, so um, when you look that uh, factor up, the factor ends up being, um, let's see here, so, uh, ends up being 17.9323. So we multiply that by 2400 and we end up with 43,037.52. But remember that is um, a, uh, a future value, okay? And we need to look at the uh, table 12 point, let me look, in, look it up here, uh, 12.3, right? Because what we did was, is we took and we said, okay, we're getting the payments of $2,400 over the course of 16 periods, right? And that's why we're multiplying by that factor of 17.9323. So that gives us a total annuity value of 43000 uh, $37.52, but we want to be able to compare that, you know, that number against the 24000 So we have to treat that like it's a lump sum and look up the present value uh, of a lump sum, and that's why we're using 12.3. So we look at that, look that factor up, and we find that that factor ends up being uh, 0 0.7880. And when we multiply that, we end up having $33,913.57, which obviously is greater than the $24,000, okay? So we would prefer to have the payments of $2,400 every quarter because we'll end up getting more money in the future, okay? Um, we could go and look up uh, the again, we can look up the ordinary annuity, but we would have to um, uh, let's see here. We looked that uh, that factor up, okay, in the table, and we end up with and we're, we're kind of like just saying, okay, I have twenty four thousand, I have twenty four hundred, and when I look up that factor, it's fourteen point one three one two. And I end up with the $33,913, and in that case, 88 cents. And we're off due to just uh, some rounding. Okay, so um, you know that's the present value of an annuity. All right, that's the present value one, and this one was the ordinary. All right, before we took into consideration the the lump sum. All right, again. Go back and watch uh, problem 13-23. That's the exact same, and I actually go over that one a couple of times, I believe. All right. Okay, so uh, problem number three. Uh, Sanka, Sanka Blanc wants to receive 8000 each year for 20 years. How much must she invest today at 4% compounded annually? All right, so payment is 8000 time is 20 years at 4%, but it's present value. Okay, how much must she um, invest today? So we're looking at the present value table, and we're looking at 20 periods for 4%, and that means our factor is 13.5903. So I have the 13.5903, and I'm multiplying that times the 8,000. That's 4272, 428, 101234. So I have $108,722.40 is the present value that has to be invested today in order to receive 8,000 each year for 20 years. Okay. All right, with that, I'm gonna stop right now because we're at a 10 minute mark and we'll pick up with question four in the next uh, video.